Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is our QI project. Um, it's labelled Good Morning Qs. Um, we're a group of fifth-year medical students. Um, I'm Michael Lam, and this is Kirith, um, Izzy, <laughs> Amy, and Alice. And we've called it Good Morning Qs. So this is what our project's going to um, be made up of. Um, and this is our presentation, sorry. So first, we're going to start off with the problem. So we went on a few words, and we... Um, had a look at what we could help with and what we noticed uh, could be improved. Uh, we've come up with a smart aim, um, our solution, the measures, we're in a few PD essay cycles, um, we're going to show you the data, um, we're going to briefly talk about our experiences and then how we can move the project forward. So when we went on the wards, we've noticed a few things. So these are the general themes that came up. So one is there's a lack of communication between all um, team members, and mainly doctors and nurses. There's also a lack of willingness uh, to ask nurses to join the ward round. Um, there's a lack of organisation and structure, and there's no team um, ethics. Uh, there's delays due to IT, and there's an inefficient data gathering. And there's also uncertainty about who has a DNA, DNA CPR in place. So looking at the problems that we encountered, this is the overall aim that we came up with. And it was to introduce a pre-ward round briefing performer, um, focusing on two wards, Holcott and Brampton, and to use that every day, um, hopefully by the end of September. So the measures, we kept it simple to begin with. We've got the outcome measure of simply using our checklist pro forma. And then the balancing measures that we hope might change as a result of that outcome. So looking at um, the nursing presence, measured it as a percentage of patients that had a nurse with them at the bedside when we had the ward round. Um, looking at prioritisation of patients on the ward round, uh, whether appropriate resources were collected, turned on, uh, another, another balancing measure that we didn't measure so far, but something to consider later, would be the time from the board round completion to ward round start, see if that changes. So this was our idea um, to implement this pre-ward round checklist, which we called the morning who's. Um, so I'll just briefly run you through that. So there's instructions at the top, so if you just hand this to a ward, they should be able to follow the instructions and do this without needing any help. So the first point is to look at who is on the ward round today. We ideally would like people to introduce themselves so everyone knows each other's name, job role, and it's important at this point to see if there's a nurse present because obviously they have a good input into the ward round, so it's kind of a prompt to get a nurse present. Um, next is who is doing what. So do we have a clear structure for the ward round and making sure everyone has been delegated a role? So this could just help make things run a bit more smoothly and a bit more efficient. Next point is who do we see first? So it's important to prioritise the patients on the wards and this could be done in terms of who's the sickest, so highest EWS scores, who the new patients are or maybe who's going home that day as well. And finally, who has checked that uh, we have access to all the resources that we need. So it's, are all the computers turned on, are all the notes available in the trolleys? Again, just to delay having to go and look for things um, later on in the ward round. And it's important to note that this is the final checklist that we came up with. Um, it's different from the initial one, but Kira is going to talk through the changes that we made. So, um, yeah, to get to the final checklist, we went through a few PDSA cycles. The first one, uh, the first checklist that we came up with was this. Um, so four main STEM questions and then a few more detailed questions that lead off from those STEM questions. So what we did first, well obviously we made the draft, but we went to Bram Brampton Ward and Holcott Ward to collect baseline data, so we didn't implement the checklist. Um, what we did notice though was that perhaps um, one, of, so one of the questions on our original checklist was do we know who has a DNA, DNA CPR in place? And we thought this perhaps wasn't um, so appropriate to have at the beginning of the ward round because it didn't really align with 
our themes as well as we hoped it to. So we took that out. So this was the second checklist that we came up with. Um, we, uh, so we still have four main STEM questions. So we basically split up the first one into two to make it slightly easier. Um, what, what we did next was implemented this second version um, on the same two wards. However, what we didn't anticipate was that it wasn't, apparently wasn't so obvious how to use the checklist. So um, we decided then to adapt the actual checklist design. So that was our, this is the, what we came up with as a final checklist. So it, it looks more professional. We've got, as um, Amy mentioned, we've got instructions at the top. We've numbered everything. So to try to make it as easy as possible for people to follow. So uh, then we went back again and implemented this. Um, I should say that we um, had to change one of our wards, so we didn't go back to Holcott Ward because of many issues that we had, um, and we went to Eleanor to try and implement this checklist. Uh, so there might be some discrepancy in the data. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't actually get the data from Eleanor, but that was the idea. Um, so yeah, when we implemented the checklist this time round, we didn't want to um, essentially hold the hand and walk them through it because we made it as simple as possible so we gave it to them to implement on their own and we'll talk through what we found uh, later. So in terms of the data, we split it up to before we implemented the pro forma and after we implemented the pro forma. We've also got a graph on the next slide for nurse participation. Um, so actually before implementation for all of these um, sections, which are all our balance measures, um, they were doing quite well at it already. So they knew who was on the name of everyone who was on the ward round. They knew what job role they had, and they knew what they were supposed to be doing on the ward round. Patients were prioritised in the way that we found a lot of wards prioritised, whereby they see new patients, sick patients, discharge patients, and then all the others. Um, but actually, before implementation, no resources were prepared for the ward round on the two wards that we looked at. Um, so the IT systems weren't in place, um, they weren't turned on, the programs weren't loaded, the notes trolley wasn't there, these were the problems that we found. We implemented um, the checklist and the reason for some of the dips in the data is that we had a slightly different structure on one of the wards to what they would normally have in the way of a locum consultant as opposed to the ordinary consultant who didn't know the name of the people on the team and didn't know what everyone was supposed to be doing on the team so that's where the dip in the data comes from. But actually resource resources being prepared actually went up, but we can't actually say at this point because we don't have a huge amount of data if this is due to the checklist or due to random <laughs> random reasons for things having changed. Um, we measured nursing presence on the ward round in the way of percentage of patients on the ward round that had a nurse present for their consult that day. So when we first went on on day one to measure on Holcott and Brampton, um, there was an average of 6.9% of patients had a nurse with them on the ward round. And then on the second day, we implemented the checklist, and there were medical students on the ward round saying, should we have a nurse for this patient, should we have a nurse for this patient? And this went up to 19% of the patients then had um, a nurse present. And then on the third day, we implemented the checklist, but we didn't stay on the ward to collect nurses and bring them, and the data went straight back down to exactly the same value as baseline again. So looking at moving forward with this project, we'd like to explore the challenges surrounding the actual implementation a bit more. Um, just some perceived barriers that we've noticed, like this might take too much time, can we do this later, this is someone else's responsibility. So we want to ex explore people's perceptions. Possibly um, raising a bit more awareness about it as well, so that people understand the value of it. Um, another idea that we had was to perhaps try and implement this checklist from a higher level. So if we spoke to one of the senior nurses or the consultants on the ward and they actually got them on board with the idea and they tried to implement the checklist, the team might take it more seriously as opposed to coming from medical students uh, doing a QI project. Um, and we also wanted to address um, the perceived barriers to nursing presence on the ward rounds because we found that when we actually asked the nurses, do you have a couple of minutes to spare to come and see this patient? more than often they would say yes if they were able to, whereas the doctors had the assumption that they were automatically too busy, so didn't actually ask. So we want to address sort of why that happens and see if we can um, facilitate nursing presence. 
And finally, if we can get some more data and trial again, implementing the checklist, we'd also like to do a staff survey to get the staff's opinions on how it feels, like does the checklist, the pro forma, work for them, has it helped them? Um, so those are potential steps for moving forwards.